This week we're doing less hacking and more securing. This episode of Tech Shop is brought to you by Gamefly. Never buy a bad game. Welcome to episode 33 of Tech Shop. I, of course, am Paul Bauer, aka twitter.com slash Pablo. This week we're going to look at simple Mac filtering for your office network. The reason we're getting into this is I recently discovered a really cool hacking site called acehackware.com. On this site, they have all sorts of cool things for the aspiring hacker or pen tester. Things like lock picks, bump keys, hardware key loggers, and more. The thing that got me thinking about Mac filtering was their blog post talking about the Mini Poner Pentest Dropbox. This tool is basically a mini wireless router that one can use during a social engineering attack to plug into someone's network to provide a wireless backdoor. In the blog post story, they use this tool on a law enforcement building where they con their way into the server room. When inside, they plug the device into an open port on the network switch, received an IP address from the DHCP server, and had their back door up and running in a few minutes. The Mini Poner Dropbox is available on Amazon for only $99 at the link below. After reading the blog post, I got to thinking that this tag could have been avoided if they had implemented some form of Mac filtering. Many of us do that on our wireless access points, but why not do it on the regular wired network as well? If you're running a Windows network with a Windows DHCP server, it's not that difficult. It's a little trickier with Windows Server 2003, but super easy on Windows 2008 and 2008 R2. We'll show you how to do it right after this. You ever go to the store and buy a game, and 10 minutes into it you realize that it's pretty much the worst game you've ever played? That will never happen with Gamefly. With Gamefly you can choose from over 8,000 titles, and they ship right to your door. Play as long as you want, and send them back when you're done. If you decide you like a game, you can opt to keep it for a discount, and Gamefly will even mail you the packaging. Packages start at the low price of only $5.95 per month for the first month, then it's only $15.95 per month after that. And Tech Shop viewers can try it free for 10 days. Just go to TechShop.com and click on the Gamefly banner at the top of the page, then follow the options to sign up for your free trial. Clicking the banner at the top of TechShop.com lets Gamefly know that Tech Shop sent you so you can help out the show. Once again, go to TechShop.com and click on the Gamefly banner at the top of the page to sign up for your free trial. Gamefly. Never buy a bad game. In the first part of the show, we talked about an attacker using a mini wireless router device called the Mini Poner that is used by pen testers to provide a backdoor into someone's network. Like any device on a network, it needs an IP address to talk to other devices. If the attacker doesn't know your subnet information, they'll most likely rely on getting an address from DHCP. This is where we can add a layer of protection. Windows DHCP servers offer a way of filtering which devices they lease at DHCP addresses to by Mac filter. In Windows 2003, which I still know some of you use, it's not very straightforward how to set it up, but all said and done, it's not that difficult either. Let's start with Windows Server 2003. First, you need to download a tool released by Microsoft called the Mac Filter Callout from the link below. After running the installer, it will install a DLL and some documents to your System32 or SysWow64 folder, depending on if you're running 32-bit Windows or 64-bit Windows. It will also create several registry changes. Next, you'll need to create a text file with a list of allowed and denied MAC addresses. Once in place, you'll need to restart DHCP for the changes to take effect. For a more detailed how-to, I found a decent step-by-step -step guide on raphaelwolf.com. Now we'll skip to the easy stuff, Windows 2008 and 2008 R2. The reason I say it's easy is because there's nothing to install, no config files to create, and no registry changes to make. Everything is built in. Plus, if you are already serving clients via DHCP, you can easily add all of your existing clients with a click of a mouse. In your DHCP server, expand your IPv4 DHCP scope. Click on Address Leases. You'll see all of your clients. Click Control A and select all of them. Then right click and select Add to Filter Allow. This will add all of your current leases to your allowed Mac filter list. This will save you time and headaches when implementing this on your existing network and will minimize people from being cut off from their internet connections. Once you have a list, expand the filters options and you will see an allow container and a deny container. Right click the allow container and select enable. If you need to add future records to your Mac filter, 
just right click the allow container and select new filter. Enter in the MAC address in the description and click add. After making any changes with your allow or deny list, I recommend restarting the DHCP server for the changes to take effect right away. That's it. Now if someone tries to plug in a device, they will not get an address unless they bring their device over to you and give you the MAC address to add to the filter. True, if someone knows your subnet address info, this won't stop them from setting a static address. If you want to prevent that, you will need to configure MAC address filtering at the switch level, and not all switches support that. This does, however, provide a quick and dirty way of keeping people off your network that don't belong there. Also, if you have wireless access points but use your Windows DHCP server to hand out the addresses, this works for that as well. That's good because if someone manages to hack your wireless, they won't be able to obtain the address from DHCP, and it provides a central location for configuring MAC filtering. That's all I have for this episode. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about this episode and MAC filtering, hit us up below or sound off on our Facebook page. Don't forget to like, fave, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time right here on Tech Chop. Tech Chop is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. Techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's here.